What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and today guys I'm bringing you another A to Z of Arc and today we're taking a look at the gas bag. Now guys, the gas bag right here in front of us, these guys are pretty simple to tame. All you need to do in order to tame them is either have a Wyvern or a Quetzal. This will enable you to pick up these guys, fly them off to one of your traps, drop them in the trap and tame them up like that. Now, if you obviously don't have access to a Wyvern or a Quetzal on Extinction, which is where these guys are only found, aside from the uh, Lunar Cave on Genesis, which you can also find these guys there. Um, but if you don't have access to those, you can simply trap them in the Corrupted Lands, uh, which can be a little bit annoying sometimes due to all the Corrupted Dinos located in the area. So if you are surrounded by a bunch of Corrupted Dinos in the area, go about clearing them away first. Otherwise, they will definitely tear apart your gas bag. You can see here we've got some Rexes and Stegos coming into the fray. Definitely deal with those guys as fast as possible because they will kill your gas bag relatively quickly. But majority of the time, your gas bag will be able to get away as well. So don't stress too much if you're unable to protect it because, yeah, they are, uh, they are very capable of getting away on their own accord and uh, surviving the damage that the corrupted creatures output. So once you've dealt with the corrupted creatures in the area, you want to focus on building a trap. Now, to make yourself safest, I guess, you need to go with three stone dinosaur gateways. Now, you can obviously use uh, four if you want to feel a little bit safer and better off, but it is possible to do with three. Grab yourself three dinosaur gateways, uh, and you will also need two of the reinforced gates. Grab those. I also like grabbing some pillars just in case. Um, and we'll show you guys why. And you can also grab a large bear trap if you want to for that extra sort of safety caution, safety net that you need. Alrighty, so once you've got all that, simply walk over to your gas bag, get your wars and your trap placed down. So get it all ready. So you can see here, we've got our gate frames ready to go. We've got our gates ready to go and our pillars. All you need to do, chuck your gates down, line them up so they're relatively close to each other. And like I said, you can use three, you can use four as well. Just make sure that there's enough room for uh, the gas bag to fit in its entirety. Now, the reason I get the pillars as well, just in case, is in case you haven't made enough room for the gas bag to begin with. Grab your bear trap. You can see there the bear trap is deploying. We can still fit outside of these, which means that uh, the gas bag shouldn't be able to get out of it. Wait for your bear trap to deploy. Once your bear trap's deployed, you then need to go about getting your gas bag into the damn trap while it casually dies to everything in the freaking area. We just got hit by it. Thank you very much, Mr. Gasbag. All right, he's still taking damage from the bleed. We're just going to wait it out. All right, so you can see here the gas bag's lined up pretty well. We're going to punch it in the face. It should aggro on us. Here we go. You can see there it's trying to bite us. We're going to run straight into the trap here. We're going to get our gate ready to go, and the gas bag will walk in. Cut it around so that it falls into the bear trap. You can see there we got the damage number off and you then want to put the gate down. Now, if you're having a problem where you can't put the gate down, that's because the gas bag is taking up too much space. All you need to do, if that's the case, is to put some pillars down. That will allow you to trap the gas bag in there. Just make sure you've got uh, the pillars on hand and you should be fine. So now that the gas bag is trapped, all you need to do is knock it out. Now, in order to knock it out, you will obviously need tranks. Now, we're using a long neck here with shock and trank darts. You can see there that those are equipped. You want to aim for the head on the gas bag. Because the gas bags take reduced damage on the entirety of the rest of their bodies, hitting their head will cause them to deflate, making them take more damage from your torpor, pretty much making them knock out. Now you can currently see here our one is pretty chunky and full, so he's going to take the same amount of damage all over. But if your one does pump up with air, um, you can deflate it by using a Snow Owl or a Monogamous Breath. Now you can see here we've got our Owl. All you need to do is freeze the gas bag. And this will cause it to deflate. Once you've deflated it, shoot it in the head and that will stop it from inhaling more air. So for example, we're on its front end here. Let's just whistle passive and unfollow. And you'll see here that it takes more torpor damage. Make sure that you shoot it in the head to stop it from filling up in air. You can see that we didn't shoot it fast enough because we were reloading, which kind of sucks. If that's the case, simply hop on back whatever tame that you brought with you. For example, we brought the Snow Owl. You can use your Monogamous Ice Breath as well if you want to. Jump off and get stuck inside of your Snow Owl while it's frozen. There we, can we, can we, there we go, we're out. The moment we shoot it, it will re aggro on us and it will suck in more air. So we're not going to have enough time to obviously uh, shoot it before it finishes refilling because you can see there it's refilled. So if that's the case, bring some trank, uh, some trank arrows because they will enable you to get the shot in before the gas bag refills itself. 
So you can see here that we've got, so we've got the crossbow ready to go. We can jump off here. We can shoot it in the head. It'll still take, it'll take the full amount of damage that it's supposed to take. And we'll be able to stop it from refilling itself. So you can see there it's taking 35 damage and we can stop it from refilling its breath attack. No, it doesn't want to stop. Okay, well, I mean, that's literally how you're supposed to, that's, that's how you do it. You shoot the gas bag in the head. If it doesn't cooperate and it refills up with air, simply just freeze it again. That's all you can really do. Jump off it, keep shooting it with the tranks while it's frozen, um, and making sure you aim for the head because that will deal the most amount of torpor damage. You can see here it's kind of stuck at the moment. Nope, it's filling up again. We're gonna shoot it in the face. It's still taking the reduced damage, which is annoying. Um, but yeah, this is how you go about knocking out the gas bags. So you will need to constantly freeze it, otherwise it uh, it will take the reduced damage. You can obviously tame it up with the reduced damage. However, it'll just take a lot longer because it does not take uh, it doesn't take the extra damage that the torpor applies. So just keep shooting it in the head as you go, and you'll see there that you'll get it unconscious in no time. Now, once you've got it unconscious, in order to protect uh, the gas bag itself because obviously you're going to be taming these guys in the wildlands if you don't have uh wyverns or a quetzal you want these spike wars they're your best protection against this sort of stuff so build yourself some spike wars you can see here we've got a couple here let's get these down in here and you want to just stick them up along the edges here these are the cheapest way to protect your gas bag try and get it so that it doesn't take damage it won't take damage itself while it's knocked out but the moment it wakes up it will start taking damage from that sort of stuff but you really just want to cover the entire trap area uh, with some spike walls and make sure that there's only a, enough space for you to get in there. You can see here, pretty good space. We can open that door and get in if we need to. And our gas bag is still protected due to the door, door being there. So you'll find that not really much is able to uh, damage it with this sort of thing. Even the pteranodons shouldn't be able to get in through the top. Uh, if you are finding that pteranodons are getting through the top, you can stick ceilings up there on pillars. However, you're better off just sitting here and defending the base while the gas bag tames up. Now, in order of food, you will want to use superior kibble for it. You can see here we've got 11 here. If you don't have access to superior kibble, crops are your next best bet. If you don't have access to crops, you will want to use Mijo berries. Wouldn't recommend using Mijo berries unless you've got a really high taming rate because these guys will take a very long time to tame up on uh, Mijo berries. So make sure you've got some superior kibble or crazy good taming rates and you should be able to tame this up really quickly. Now, once your gas bag is tamed up, these guys have some of the best weight in the entire of in the entire game of R. Honestly, these guys are literally absolute madmen when it comes to their weight. We just need to. We've actually done such a good job on this trap that we can't even get out with our gas bag. Let's just demolish these. There we go. Okay, you can see there we're out. So as for the gas bag's attack um, and weight, like I was saying, he has some of the best weight in the game. This one was a level 90 and it's got 4k weight off the bat. Absolutely nuts. So you definitely can use this guy as a pack mule. You can use him to literally, that was very close to us. You can use him to literally store whatever it is that you want to. And you will, you, I mean, majority of the time you won't over encumber this guy, which is absolutely nuts. And it's really good. Now, as well as that, he also has the ability to fly. Now, that in itself is an amazing ability. You also won't take damage as long as you have uh, a little bit of air left in you. But you can see that we just deflated ourselves, so we're actually going to take some fall damage. Let's just turn creative mode off for a second so you guys can see. So refill yourself on gas, take off, and you won't actually take fall damage if you've got, uh, I think it's like 20% or more gas in the gas section. You'll pretty much be safe. But uh, the gas bag's really great at just floating in the sky and navigating the terrain because it's pretty much like an easy way of flying really. So you can see here we're gonna come down and we shouldn't take any fall damage right here. And we're gonna hit the ground. We took a little bit of fall damage. Too much damage worth. You won't ever take more than 40% of your health. That's the maximum amount of damage you can take from uh, gas bags. As for their saddles, they are craftable at level, that helps if I can type in the gas bag's name. They're craftable at level 43, relatively easy, 150 chitin, 185 fiber, and 350 hide. They are one of the best turret soakers in the game as well, due to them taking about 80% resistance to damage while they are pumped up. You can see here we are fully filled with gas. We take full damage. We expel our gas as soon as I do it. We expel our gas, we'll be taking a lot more damage now. 20, 24 damage. So there's a huge difference in, in damage reduction when you're full of gas and when you're not. This makes these guys one of the best turret soakers in the game. Due to the damage reduction on everything. 
when they are full of gas. Now, you can also refill air while you're on the floor, which enables you to pretty much just continuously fill yourself up with gas. For that to happen, you will need to pump stamina on these guys, and you will also need to pump oxygen on them. Their oxygen correlates with their gas levels. The more oxygen you have, the more gas you will be able to store in yourself. So you can see that we just gave ourselves a bunch of levels. We're going to level up a little bit of stamina, and we're just going to dump the rest into oxygen. And you'll see that we had about 250 gas before. We're going to have a huge amount of gas now. You can level up their weight. Wouldn't really recommend it too much unless you've got one specifically designed for weight, one specifically designed for soaking, that sort of stuff. But you can see here our gas is now at 1,079, which pretty much enables us to fly wherever the hell we want to because we have that much gas that we're uh, capable of flying around the entirety of the map. Like I was saying, they can soak turrets. You want to make sure that you've got dedicated ones, though. You don't want to have ones half dedicated to soaking, half dedicated to getting around the map. So make sure you've got those sorted and make sure you've got weight ones ready. But uh, you can see here, we're not even holding any of the buttons and we're still moving forward. All you need to do when you want to go forward a little bit or change the direction is use the directional keys and that'll enable you to steer your gas bag. These guys are phenomenal teams. They're really good. One of the best teams, in my opinion, in Ark, hands down, just because of their versatility when it comes to PvP. You can use these guys to soak an entire base, get in there with their weight, take all their gear, and then just get out of there. Definitely worth investing in gas bags, especially when you're imprinting on them because they will take reduced damage. And like I said, their saddles are relatively easy to get for the higher tier ones anyway, so you are able to get really good saddles for them, which massively reduce the amount of damage that they take phenomenally by getting a decent saddle on. This one almost is dead because we've taken a lot of fall damage. I still think they need to reduce the fall damage that gas bags take because they're literally a floating bag of air. Like, literally. I definitely think they need to fix that up. But, uh, yeah, guys. They also have the ability to blow away um, dinos or players or anything like that. So for that to happen, you just need to fill yourself up with a little bit of gas. I also apologize for that, guys. Uh... Extinction is just destroying my CPU at the moment by the looks of it. So we're going to come down here. I'm probably going to die. You can also jump off right before they're about to hit the ground as well to negate the fall damage. So that'll prevent them from taking fall damage as well. So take note of that. Uh, like I was saying though, you can suck in some gas and you can actually expel it to push away enemy dinos and enemy players. Now that will cause them not to take fall damage uh, because they get the gas bag buff. But you can still pretty much protect yourself, except we're not able to push Sarko away and our... Ooh, we don't have creative mode activated. That's a fat rip. But you can definitely use these guys to travel around the map a lot, and I would heavily recommend using them for Aberration as well. They're a lot easier to use to navigate Aberration than, say, like, Monogamers and stuff like that. Because Monogamers have been reduced into the... nerfed into the ground, gas bags are really good because they can just constantly float around the map. Um, but do be careful if you take them into the Radiation Zone because, uh... They do take radiation damage, so you will be in a bit of a pickle if, uh, if you take them there. But that's going to be it for the gas bags today, guys. We've covered everything about them, how to tame them, the traps to use, their abilities, all that sort of stuff, and uh, what to level them in. So hopefully you guys found this one useful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe down below for more, but other than that, guys, I will catch you in the next one.